Well, welcome everybody to the first episode uh, of my round Britain trip in Muera, which I did in 2023. I have to say that uh, making videos of the trip is more daunting than the trip itself in some ways, but I'll do my best to uh, get all the videos out. It could be about 10 episodes, I think. Uh, we'll see how it goes and see how your interest is. I've been planning the trip for quite a long time and was meant to go in 2020 but that, obviously that all fell apart uh, and finally I got the opportunity again last year to um, do the trip and uh, I set off uh, on the 1st of May uh, and it took me about three months to complete and get back to my starting point. In 2020 uh, after the end of lockdown I managed to do a month sailing up the east coast of England um, and did quite a lot of exploration so to get my round Britain trip underway I wanted to get onto fresh tru cruising ground as soon as possible and so I did two long passages from Grimsby my start point to Tynemouth and then from Tynemouth up to Granton in Edinburgh so it was two long passages uh, to get me going and uh, this video will just cover that the launch and then those passages I keep Moira on the drive at my house in Sheffield. So the first thing was to get her tow to HCA Grimsby, uh, get her launched and uh, masked up, sails on and spray hood and everything set up. Got the cabin stowed and um, then got my first brew on. I thought I'd uh, come and show you another famous Corby that's moored here in HCA Grimsby. This is Betsy who has crossed the Atlantic twice in the Jester Challenge and uh, had a lot of modifications done including a, a hard spray hood with a sealed hatch at the companionway just to keep all the water out. Uh, he's got Dyneema, ringing, Dyneema rigging on all the stays and guardrails and uh, quite a few other features and adaptations inside to make it possible to cross the Atlantic in a small boat including filling putting lots of buoyancy in to make her unsinkable so yeah just thought I'd come and pay homage anyway it was time for me to get on my way so uh, we had a little leaving party on the pontoon my dad came to see the cabin there and a glass of bubbly just to toast the voyage and then it was time for me to slip lines and head out through the lock into the Humber. <laughs> I, think, I think that's what he wails. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Take care. Away she goes. Very nice. Next stop, Spin Head. It did feel amazing to be off after so many years planning and dreaming about the trip and I'd given myself an easy first day just seven and a half miles down the Humber to Spurn Head where I anchored next to the uh, pilot jetty for the night. Unfortunately it was quite bumpy um, with uh, quite a long fetch behind me of a northerly wind uh, just kicking up some chop but I uh, basically wanted to be there so that I could head out of the Humber at slack water in the morning uh, to just to get round Spurn Head where the currents can be very strong and uh, so I slept there for the night and then uh, set out at uh, around uh, just before five in the morning 
uh, the following day to get uh, slack water. So this is me leaving Spurnhead at 4.45 the following morning, just trying to catch uh, slack water as I went round Spurnhead. And I had 110 nautical miles ahead of me to get to Tynemouth, which was my first stop. And uh, the main obstacle on the way was Flamborough Heads, which I stayed about two or three miles off. Unfortunately, the first <clears throat> section of this trip was uh, a lot of motoring. And it wasn't really until about Scarborough where I got uh, a good four, force four, force five tailwind and started sailing nicely, was surfing down the waves and uh, became much more pleasurable. It was really cold and I had about six layers on and uh, just struggling to keep warm. Not surprising in early May. But uh, I came into Tymouth at uh, around 8.15 in the morning uh, and anchored up and had a rest for a few hours before uh, I went over to the fish key to pick up my son who got the train down from Edinburgh so that he could crew with me heading back to Edinburgh the following day. So here I am uh, just pulled into the quayside at the fish dock to bring Pete on board. I'm pleased to say he'd got a couple of boxes of fish and chips on the way through so we went back to the anchorage and had that before we set off uh, later in the afternoon. This trip was now uh, another 108 miles but we had a really good following wind the whole trip with quite big swells, lots of surfing. Uh, it took us about um, just under 24 hours and uh, wind vane steered the whole trip without any input at all from the tiller so that was really good. It was good to have crew on board so I could uh, we could both get a bit of sleep during the night and the other fun thing that happened was we had a call from the Coast Guard in the evening as we were going up the Northumbrian coast um, us saying that they had been told that there was a small boat far out to sea and it was quite rough and the caller was worried that they were uh, in trouble and we managed to reassure the Coast Guard that all was well we were having a fantastic sail uh, and we were on our way to Edinburgh. As you can see we had some quite dramatic seas coming up behind us but uh, no breaking waves and uh, the boat just rode them nicely. Here's the wind vane doing its stuff. This is us now somewhere north of Dunbar, uh, just starting to come round into the Forth of Firth and uh, you go past Bass Rock which is a spectacular lump of rock covered in seabirds uh, and uh, a good landmark to welcome you into Scotland. So we moored up at the pontoon quite a narrow gap between the pontoon and the harbour wall and it's advised that you turn yourself around as you arrive so that your bow is pointing outwards again ready for the off rather than trying to do a u-turn and hitting the mud there as you can see there's a lot of mud at low tide so it's good to take a couple of days to rest and catch up on sleep and uh, met up with some sailing friends who live in Edinburgh and I spent some time with them and uh, from there I'm going to leave you at this point uh, and uh, the next section is basically harbour hopping on my way up the east coast of Scotland, uh, ultimately getting to Wick which was my setting off point for Orkney. Just to give you a little spoiler, the main theme of the next uh, week or so was fog uh, and rain and general dich weather as they call it in Scotland. Nonetheless, it was great to be on my way and really exciting to get into some new uh, territory. So see you next time.